Anyone who's gotten themselves into photography would have definitely at some point come across the topic of aperture values being measured in f-stops and then you might eventually find out that there's this other thing called t-stops and it keeps showing up particularly when it comes to filmmaking and you may also have noticed that the aperture on professional cinema lenses are marked in t-stops as opposed to f-stops the latter of which were so used to dealing with in stills photography some people might even say that it's the exact same thing, they're just two different names for the same thing. Now that is incorrect, f-stops and t-stops are two different things, and here's how they're different. f-stops are a measurement of the actual size of a lens's iris opening relative to its focal length. t-stops measure how much light actually comes out of the lens. In fact, the t in t-stops stands for transmission, which is basically the word that sums up the entire concept. Every single lens actually has both an f-stop and a t-stop reading. It's just a matter of whether or not they've been marked out on the lens. On stills photography lenses, you'll almost never see the t-stop being marked out on them. So to find out what the t-stop is on a stills lens, you can try looking up the lens on the DxO Mark website, and on most of the lenses, they have measured and published what they found the maximum t-stop value of the respective lenses to be. A lens's t-stop value would always be darker than its f-stop value, and that's because it's simply not possible to make glass that has 100% transmission. Even with top quality glass, it would still block out a trace amount of light. So to illustrate, let's say there's this theoretical magical 50mm f1.4 lens that's engineered from magic glass that has 100% transmission. None of the light that enters and exits the lens gets absorbed by any of the glass elements in the lens. Then in this case, the lens would have an f-stop of f1.4 and then an identical t-stop of t1.4 as well. Now in the real world, when we account for light loss due to not having magic glass, the f-stop of the lens would still remain at f1.4, but the t-stop would more realistically be around t1.6. Now to visually show you the difference, I've taken two photos. One of the photos was shot through the Canon EFS 24mm f2.8 STM prime lens, and the other was through the EFS 17-55 f2.8 at 24mm as well. Both the lenses were tested at 24mm at the same f-stop, of f2.8 on the same exact camera body, which is the ATD. But according to DxO Mark, the 24mm prime lens has a t-stop of t3 and the 17 55 having a t-stop of t3.6. So even though both photos from each lens were shot at the same focal length, same f-stop, and exactly the same exposure settings, the shot from the 24mm prime lens is clearly brighter than the 17 55 Now it almost wouldn't make sense because in both photos the ISO shutter speed and f-stop were the exact same, until you take the difference in t-stops into account then the difference in brightness starts to make sense. Now in this case, the 17 to 55 being a zoom lens probably means it has more glass elements compared to the 24mm prime lens, which means the light has to pass through more layers of glass resulting in more light being absorbed by the glass resulting in a darker t-stop. Now do note that although these two lenses come in at two different t-stops, when measured at the same focal length, they would still render the exact same amount of depth of field because they still have the same f-stop. Depth of field is dependent on the size of the iris's diameter, regardless of transmission. To summarize, when it comes to gauging depth of field, trust the f-stop, and when it comes to exposure, you want to look at the t-stop. So why are t-stops such a big deal in filmmaking and almost unheard of in stills photography? That's because in filmmaking, we depend heavily on the aperture to expose our image. In stills photography, you can prioritize the aperture and play around with your ISO or shutter speed to properly expose your image. But for motion picture, the shutter angle is usually always fixed to maintain the right amount of motion blur, and the ISO is usually set to the camera's native ISO for the cleanest possible image, which leaves you with aperture as your only variable left. So because the aperture is relied on so much for exposure, it would make sense to mark cine lenses in t-stops which are more accurate for this purpose instead of f-stops. So that's all for today about t and f-stops, and if I wasn't being confusing, hopefully by now you would understand the difference between the two. If you enjoyed the video, do consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Leave a question or comment in the comment section below. I would absolutely appreciate any feedback you may have about my videos. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.